case, I will be covering mat drills. I will be covering drills and concepts that apply to the top and bottom position. I'll be going over drills from the top position first. There are some basic concepts that will help the top wrestler be better prepared to attack the bottom man. These concepts can be put into action when wrestlers are drilling from the top position. The first concept is to stop the bottom man's first motion. I will now cover some speed and control technique drills that can be used to stop the bottom man's first motion. My partner today will be Sean King. Okay, the first concept I'm gonna talk about is something that I call the pinch. This is a drill that will stop the bottom man's first motion. Anytime you're working from the top position, one thing you should realize is that there's basically three ways that the bottom man will move and try to gain an escape or a reversal. The first is from a sit out. The second is a stand up. And the third is some type of roll. Everything that the bottom man does will come from one of those three maneuvers. So what we need to do is be able to stop all three of those techniques. As I said before, the first thing I'm gonna show is called uh, a pinch. Okay, and what we're doing with the pinch, right off the whistle, all we're doing is covering both feet, we're gonna cover both ankles, and all we're gonna do is pinch both ankles in like such. When you do that, that stops all of the movement that he can do from the bottom position. Again, as soon as that whistle blows, this is a nice little drill that you can work in your practice room. You just come from this position to here. When you get here, you squeeze both feet together. That's the first one. That's a drill that could be worked on off the whistle in the wrestling room. As the coach blows the whistle, the wrestlers can assume that position. The second one is a jam. The jam will stop a stand up, sit out, or any type of roll. Basically, what you do is shock the bottom man right off the whistle. When you do a jam, basically what you're doing is taking your chest. You're gonna start at the midpoint of his back and drive him forward. As you drive him forward, you're gonna be driving him with your chest, like such. From this position here, you're gonna move directly behind, chest in his back, and just drive him forward like such. That will shock him and stop his first motion. As a drill in the practice room, this is the way it works. From this position here, as the whistle blows, you move directly behind and immediately you go forward. Now on this technique, if you notice, as I push off of my feet, uh, drive my chest up through the midpoint of his back, I'm also gonna take both arms and put them behind his triceps as I drive. Now this technique will stop just about anything that he does from the bottom position. It's an excellent technique if you know that you have a man that likes to stand up from the bottom. Again, this is something that will stop his first motion. Let's just go through that again. From this position here, we're gonna move directly behind. Now from here, you're gonna drive with your chest straight up through the midpoint of his back. You're gonna use your arms to catch him behind his triceps. Right off the whistle, you're gonna be doing this, just like that. Oftentimes, you'll be able to knock him right down to the mat, and that's the thing you want to be able to do. The next thing that you can do as a drill in a wrestling room, and you can work this off the whistle, and it's sort of a speed drill. From the referee's position, okay, let's turn around this way, like this. From this position right here, what we're gonna do is just go tight waist, far ankle. This is also something that will stop the bottom man's first movement. So from here, on the whistle, we just go here. What we're doing is moving to that position. Now that stops the sit out, that stops the stand up, and that stops any type of roll. You know, if a man goes for a roll, he has to reach and control this wrist. So by going from this position to here, you stop all of that motion. Now, by taking his ankle, you stop the stand up, you also stop the sit out. As a drill, this could be worked on in the wrestling room like such. Okay, the wrestling coach blows the whistle, and your wrestlers go from here to here, from here to here. That's a speed drill. <clears throat> the other way that you can go to an ankle uh, control reach is by going to the other side. From this position here, what we're gonna do is, is maintain the tight waist position and go to the near ankle. So from here, we're gonna shift and go to the, the near ankle, okay? Show you what we're talking about. 
from this position here, we go from here to here. Now, you can, you can control the ankle on both sides. Okay, from this position right here, you can go from here to the waist and far ankle, or you can go from this position to his uh, near ankle. From this position, you stop his, his first motion. Another concept that you can work is just a basic near arm chop, okay? Again, you can work this drill on the whistle. You may want to work one of these, uh, each one of these drills from five to 10 times a piece. Basically, what we're talking about here is just chopping his near arm and driving him forward like this. Controlling his near arm, controlling him at the waist with a tight waist. Again, you have to beat the man on the whistle because the next thing we're gonna talk about is establishing a position of control. But you have to beat the bottom man off the whistle. Again, from this position here, tight waist, near arm chop, just like this, right off the whistle. Okay, the next thing we're gonna talk about is taking the far ankle and doing that near knee block, okay? So you move right from the referee's position into far ankle control and driving your outside knee towards the inside. Okay, here's how we're gonna do this. From this position here, what we're gonna do is take this inside knee, drive it to the inside of his. This arm, his elbow arm, goes across his back, like such, okay? Let me show you what we're doing with this arm. Okay, so from this position here, the knee goes inside, the arm goes across the back, like such. Now from here, as we do that, as soon as we do that, we're gonna take his ankle. Now, by blocking this knee from moving, you stop most of the movements that he can do from the bottom position. Once you go from here to here, you're already in your position so that you have established a position of control. Now from here, you take the ankle. From this position, what we're gonna do is use this as a breakdown. We're gonna pop the near knee back. If you see my inside knee here, we're gonna pop his inside knee back as we pull up on the ankle, just like that. Now you're in a great position to start working for your fall, okay? Now, as far as working on that maneuver in the wrestling room as a drill, again, the coach could blow the whistle and the top man will move from this position to here, like such. Okay, from here you take the ankle, the knee goes to the inside. Once you go here, you drive this inside knee back, you drive him forward and you pull up on the ankle, like that. Those are some, some speed drills that you could work on to stop the bottom man's first motion. Now remember, that's one of the first things you should try to do from the top position. Stop his first motion. Once you stop his first motion, then you can try to establish a position of control. The second concept a wrestler needs to think about is establishing a position of control. Once a wrestler establishes a position of control, he can then work for the pin. Live situation drills are the best type of drills to help a wrestler learn how to work from a position of control. Now I will cover some of these situation drill positions. The first one we're gonna talk about is a two-on-one. With a two-on-one, you have the top man establish a two-on-one position. Now from this position here, the whistle blows and then both men will fight to see who can gain a better position. From this position, as a for instance, the top man might work into his tilt situations, whereby he takes the bottom man up into a tilt situation. He can break the bottom man down like such and work into what we call a cross wrist ride, this type situation, and then possibly into a half Nelson and into a pin. So from that situation, the top man will work for the pin, and the bottom man will work to get out. The second situation, which is control uh, situation drilling position, is the bar arm. Okay, the bottom man has broken down to the mat. Top man has on a bar arm. Bar arm. This is a position of control. From this position, the coach blows the whistle, and both men will fight from this position. The top man will work to establish a better position to pin the bottom man, and a bottom man will work to better his position by working for an escape 
or for a reversal. So from here, the top man might start working into a bar on the pin situation. From the bottom position, say if Sean's on top here, Sean has a bar on me, I may work to get this bar arm back down to the mat by hipping into him like such and taking my arm out that way. Again, that's a live situation whereby the coach blows the whistle and both men go, go live. The second, uh, the third situation we're going to talk about is a crab right situation. This is a situation that happens quite often in the practice room and in competition. Normally it happens when the top man is working for some type of a leg right position. But this is a great position to work on scrambling from. The bottom man sits on the mat here, and the top man goes into a crab right position. Let's talk, show you what we're talking about. From this position here, the top man goes into a position with two underhooks. Now, when the whistle blows, both men start to wrestle. Sean tries to improve his position. I try to improve my position. This will, will teach both men how to scramble from this position and work for an escape from the bottom and for a pin, pin from the top. For instance, I may work on throwing in a half Nelson, elevating Sean over and coming off to the side, working for my pin. The next situation is uh, two underhooks uh, from this position. Now, in this situation, I'm on my knees and Sean is in a front sit position. From here, I go into a position where I have two underhooks, like such. Okay, let's just turn like this. Again, live wrestling, the whistle blows, and both men start to wrestle from this position. From the top position, I may try a chin suck, go to the side, take his chin, pull him back this way. I may want to shove this bottom man back down to the mat by shoving him over to the side this way and going into a one-on-one -on -one wrist control ride. From the bottom position, Sean would try to take my underhooks off and establish some type of hand control. Okay, the next situation is leg riding. And this is a situation that needs to be worked on quite often in the wrestling room. What you do is you have the top man put the legs in, put a leg ride in, like such. Okay, right. And then you have both men work from this position here this is one position, a uh, live situation, the whistle blows, both men go live from this position. You can have the bottom man broken all the way down to the mat, like such. This is another situation that could be a live wrestling situation. You can have uh, the top man in a position where he has most of the controls he needs. You can give him one arm, have him go live from this situation. But having one man or the top man put the legs on and go live from that position is a very important position. Uh, normally, in competition, you, you're going to find at least a few wrestlers on the other team that are avid uh, users of the legs. Another situation that you can work from is a position where the top man has on a half Nelson and the bottom man is on his back, like this. Now, in this situation, the top man has to work to keep him on his back, and the bottom man is working to get off of his back. This will teach the top man how to adjust his body and how to get the fall in competition. Again, this will be a live situation. You start from here, the top man has on a nice deep half Nelson, and the bottom man has to work himself off the mat. The top man has to work to tighten up his pin and stay in a good position, a good enough position, to keep the bottom man on his back. The third concept a wrestler must be aware of in the top position is countering. Countering drills involve doing drills that will allow the top man to maintain control of the bottom man. Countering drills also involve moving the feet so that the top wrestler will always be in his best position to attack. Now I will cover some of these drills. The first one is the spinning drill. The spinning drill is done by placing your chest on the midpoint of the bottom man's back, like such. In this situation here, the coach can blow a whistle. When he blows a whistle, the wrestler can start moving in one direction. On the second whistle, he starts moving in the other direction. So, so that you get a situation where you're going from side to side.
That's a very good drill to help the top man learn how to move his feet. For instance, if the bottom man does a, a sit out turn in here, by doing that drill, it will help the top man learn how to move his feet and get back behind the bottom man as he starts to move. The second drill is roll counters. And this is very important. As I said before, the roll is one of the three maneuvers that the bottom man might use to get away. To stop a roll, the top man, again, must move his feet. OK, say Sean starts to roll me to his right side. To counter the roll, you need to move to the same side that he's trying to roll to. To put this into a drill, you could have the bottom man reach for hand control. And as he starts to roll, the top man has to hop to the other side. OK, once I block his roll, I come back to this position here, and I'll hop to the other side. Sean takes my wrist, and he st starts to roll. I move to this side. OK, now I'll come back to this side. He starts to roll, and I move to this side. That's the best way to stop a roll, is to get to the same side that he's rolling to. Oftentimes, I'll see wrestlers doing this. The bottom man will start a roll, and he'll try to stop it by posting out here. If the bottom man does this roll correctly, he still will have a chance to make his side roll work. <clears throat> by hopping to the other side, that stops his roll completely. So you can put this little drill uh, into action in your practice room. Again, bottom man takes my wrist on this side, he starts to roll, you move your feet to this side. Okay, now, you come back up, he starts to roll to the other side. You move your feet to this side. That will help you become better at stopping a roll. Another little technique that you can use to stop a roll is what we call a roll through. OK, in this situation, the bottom man takes the wrist, and he starts to roll. OK, say he starts to beat you with it, and you're going to have trouble stopping it. From here, we're just going to follow him all the way through, stay parallel, and do what we call a re-roll. Take him right back through. OK, let's show you what we're talking about again. OK, again, he starts to roll. From here, we step over, take him, and re-roll him right through. If you're going to take him through on a re-roll, make sure that you keep your body parallel to him. His objective from the bottom with this side roll is to roll me and end up perpendicular. I'll show you what we're talking about. Sean, you hop on top. OK. If I make my side roll work right here, I'm going to end up in this situation. This is perpendicular, OK? If Sean wants to re-roll me, OK, if it's too late for him to get to the other side, now watch. He's going to re-roll me by staying parallel and rolling me right through. OK, the next situation we're going to talk about is following a sit-out. And this is very important. And you can put this in, in, a form, in the form of a drill in your practice room very easily. Uh, there's a number of different ways you can do it. There's a number of different things the bottom man might do with the sit-out. The first thing we're going to do is just follow the sit-out. The coach can have the bottom man do a sit-out turn-in, and top man just simply follows. We'll do two of those, OK? Sit out, turn in. OK, right here. Sit out, turn in. OK. That drill will teach you how to move your feet and how to get back behind. So the bottom man does a sit out, turn in, and the top man just simply follows. The second thing that happens quite often from the sit out position is that the bottom man will do a switch. There's a number of different ways you can counter a switch. Now, you can put these drills into action, into action by just working on counters for the switch. The coach calls out uh, the first move. OK, sit out, switch, uh, and the first counter. The first counter is going to be a re-switch. And we'll go through this one slow so that you can see what we're doing. OK, so from this position, Sean starts to switch. OK, now he starts coming all the way around right here. Now see, I sit my leg under like such, and I come through on him. OK, let's do that again. OK, now to re-switch, you wait until the bottom man gets almost all the way around, and then you use your, you, you sit your inside leg under, 
and you sit your outside leg through. Watch again. Okay, Sean starts to switch. Okay, all the way down. Now, you put my inside leg first, then you come through and come back up top. That's a good little drill to teach you how to counter a switch. Another situation is a step across. Okay, in this situation, Sean starts to switch. Okay, we post the head on the mat right here, and we just hop across his body as he switches. Okay, watch again. So the coach calls out, okay, switch, step across. Sean switches, post the head on the mat, and step across. Now, we're gonna work on some counters to the stand-up. Okay, now the first one we mentioned before, which is a jam, okay? The coach blows the whistle, the bottom man starts to stand up, and then all the top man does is work on the technical aspect of his jam. Remember, on the jam, we're gonna use your chest to drive it right up through the midpoint of his back and drive him right through his shoulder joints. You're gonna push off on your feet. So when the coach says go, the bottom man starts to stand up, top man just jams like such, okay? That's one way uh, to stop the stand-up. The other way is that we talked about before, and uh, we put them into a drill situation, is just by going to tight waist ankle control, this side, from this position here, tight waist, near ankle. These will also stop the stand-up. The next thing you wanna work on is what happens when the top man gets up to his feet. Now, when the top man starts to come all the way up to his feet, like such, now, in this situation, the bottom, the top man wants to work on trying to get his hands locked. That's one. So, from this position here, the coach can, can say, okay, bottom man, stand up, come up to your feet. Once he gets to his feet, the top man has to try to lock his hand again. So the bottom man is, is hand fighting, the top man is trying to get his hands, hands locked again. So, in this situation, we come up, okay, now I try to lock my hands again. Okay, this is what the, the top man is trying to do. If I can get my hands locked again, then I have a pretty good opportunity to take him back down to the mat. Now, <laughs> another little drill that you can work on, and actually it's a technique, is when the bottom man gets to his feet, coming to a single leg tackle. Oftentimes, the bottom man will get to his feet and you have trouble locking your hand. There may not be a whole lot of time left in the period. For instance, it may be 15 seconds you still need to maintain control of this bottom man. So here's another little technique and a drill, or a technique that you can put in the form of a drill. Okay, the bottom man stands up. Okay, from this position here, you come around with the elbow hand, and you just reach in on a single leg tackle and pick the leg up. Okay, again. The bottom man starts to stand up. From here, you squat low, you come around, and you pick the leg up. Now, you have, a, have an opportunity to maintain control, uh, the period may run out, or you may choose to take him back down to the mat. Okay, let's do that one one more time. From this position here, the bottom man stands up. From here, come right inside and get control of a single leg tackle. <clears throat> the next technique is lifting. When the bottom man comes to his feet, say we get control of his hips, we lock our hands. Now we have to be able to lift him up off of his feet and take him back down to the mat. So in this situation, he comes up to his feet. Now from here, what we want to work on here is just lifting. Here's a nice little technique you can work on and put it in the form of a drill to get the bottom end back down to the mat. From here, what we're going to do is take the inside leg, step it right between his legs, like such. From here, we step this inside leg right between his legs. From here, we're just gonna practice lifting. As we lift him, we're gonna coordinate taking his inside leg out with our outside leg. So from here, we step and back down to the mat. Okay, one more time. He stands up, we get our hands locked, we step in, lift, and down to the mat. Those are some nice little drills that will help you maintain control of the bottom man when he either sits out or comes to a standing position. Now, I will cover some drills and concepts that can be used from the bottom position. There are three basic concepts that will give wrestlers a better feel 
for what they should be trying to accomplish with various techniques and drills from the bottom position. The first concept is try to create space. Okay, I want to thank my partner, Sean. We're going to have a new partner for this section of the tape. Rick Lynch. Thanks a lot, Rick. Okay, as I said before, the, the first concept we're going to talk about is trying to create space from the bottom position. What you're going to find is that any technique that you do from the bottom position, in order to get away from this man or reverse him, you're going to have to create some space between your hips and his hips. I'll give you a few examples. <clears throat> Let's take first the sit-out situation. If Rick can stay close to my hips, I'm always going to have trouble getting away from him, either reversing or escaping. But what the sit-out allows me to do is create space. Okay, so from here, from here, boom, you notice the first thing that happens is I move, get my hands moving, but I try to get my hips away from Rick. In this situation now, to get my final escape or reversal, my hips move even further away from him as I make my final turn. Take a roll, for instance. If I hit my side roll, in this situation here, I start my side roll here. Now, you notice how my hips came away from him as I rolled him through. Now, eventually, I'll write to control him in this situation here, or roll over top and be able to put him in a position so that I can work for my pin. But that's another situation where you're trying to create space with your hips. The third situation may be a stand-up. I'll start my stand-up, get my hand control. Now, from here, you notice when most wrestlers get hand control from the bottom, they pop the hips away so that they can create space. If in this situation or any other situation, say that Rick stays close to my hips and I'm trying to get away. As long as he can maintain control of my hips and stay close enough, he can also maintain control of my body. So that's a good concept to think about when you're trying to get away from the opposition off of the mat. Again, let's just run through the situation again. Creating space here and moving. Creating space with the side roll and moving. See my hips come away from him as I roll him. Creating space with the stand up. Here, here, space. And then turn. The next concept I want to talk about is hand control. Anytime you move from the bottom position, and it really doesn't depend too much on what technique you're trying to use. You're going to have to get hand control. That's very, very, very important. Okay, I'll show you what we're talking about. Let's take the three basic movements that we talked about from the bottom position. First is sit out. Anytime you use a sit out, okay, from here, you come to a sit out position. Now, if I just sit out and turn in without getting control of his hand, Rich can follow me all day long. I'll do my turn in, and he just follows around in a circle. I'll do a sit out, turn in, he just keeps following. The time that you can get away from him is when you start to control his hand. Okay, here's what we're talking about. So I come to a sit position right here. All right, now as I do my turn in, I start to peel the hand. Now I can get away from it. You need to think about controlling the hands on just about any sit out that you do. Okay, the next concept is your side roll. One of the three maneuvers that we talked about starts all of your technique from the bottom position. Okay, it's impossible to side roll this man without controlling a hand. You need to control his hand first. In this situation, it would be the risk. Okay, from here, to side roll him, as I so side roll him through, I have to have control of the hand. That allows me to get away from him and maneuver so that I can work for my escape or reversal. The place where this really applies is when you hit your stand-up. You're really going to have a lot of trouble getting away from this man if you get to your feet and he has his hands locked. Okay? Starting from the bottom position, you should be thinking about hand control on your very first movement. Okay? So when I start to come up like such, say with an inside stand-up, I'm already covering his hand. Now, as I rotate to my feet, I have hand control in this situation here. Now, when Rich tries to lock his hands around my waist, I block this hand out. 
to get away with my stand-up, I like to come across and take a two-on-one situation. Now I can work for my escape. From this situation, I can control his hand. I can turn back into him this way. I can control his hand and work out this way. If Rich comes over my near arm here, like such, to try to control me, I control the hand and I rotate out this way. By controlling the hand, I can also step behind this near leg, take him back with the Granby cradle position that way. But if you notice, all of those uh, escape uh, techniques or reversal techniques start with the, with the control of the hands. You have to control the top man's hands if you're going to get away from him. Okay, the next concept we're going to talk about is keeping your head higher than your hips. Now, there are a few situations where your head may be lower than your hips. However, in most situations, you're going to find that you have your head higher than your hips. I'll give you a few examples. Let's first take the sit-out situation. Okay, when I come to a sit-out situation, watch the position of my head, watch the position of my hips right here. Okay? The head is higher than my hips. Okay. If, when I start to sit out, okay, and do my turn in, if Rick can keep my hip down on the mat, you're going to have a lot of trouble working your escape or your reversal. So, as much as possible, you want to try to keep your head above your hips. Side roll situation. Okay. Initially, my head may head, head towards the mat, but as I start to side roll him through, your head is above the hips. Your head is above the hips. The stand-up is pretty obvious. When you hit your stand-up, you come here, now your head is automatically above the hips. Two on one, you turn back into it. <coughs> now, uh, let's look at some situations where your head gets below the hips. What happens when Rick is on top and I do this? Rick moves right into a cradle position, okay? What happens when I'm down on the mat with an elbow? He goes right into a half Nelson, okay? So you see that trying to get your head above the hips is important. Anytime you get your head too close to the knee or below the hips, you're asking for big trouble. I will cover some essential drills that will help wrestlers from the bottom position. The first is a hip heist. This is a very good drill to work on in the practice room. I'll show you what we're talking about here. What we're talking about is getting in this position here, like such. Uh, you can do it without, without a partner. Basically, what the coach does is call out what he wants uh, the bottom man to do from this position. Now, I can go in any direction with this hip heist drill. The, the coach can call out right leg under. That's right leg under. Left leg under, like such. You always try to keep your hips high up off the mat. When you do this drill, you don't want to have your hips sitting on the mat. It's a very good conditioning drill, and what it does is assimilate a lot of the moves that you do from the bottom position. Again, let's look at this again. Right leg under, left leg under, like such. My hips are up off the mat. Let's try this. Right leg over, left leg over, left leg under, right leg under, left leg over, left leg under, left leg over, right leg under. As the coach calls out the maneuver, then the wrestler will perform that maneuver. Again, right leg over, left leg under, right leg under, left leg under, right leg over, left leg under, left, left leg over. Left leg under, right leg over, left leg under, left leg over, left leg under, right leg over, left leg under. Okay. By doing that, as I said before, a wrestler can assimilate a lot of the same moves that he uses from the bottom in wrestling. Let's show you what we're talking about. <clears throat> Take a situation where the bottom man is doing a switch. And say the, the top man stops him to a certain degree. Okay, I hit my switch position here. Okay, he stopped me. Now watch. This is called right leg under. Boom. I can get out. 
say I perform my switch, or if not my switch, my sit out turn in motion from here, this is right leg over. Okay, right leg over. Say you hit your side roll. This is a right leg under from here, right here, this situation. Right leg under. Say you come to your feet, this situation here. This is left leg under. Okay, you're on your feet, but the left leg goes under, okay? Left leg under. <clears throat> left leg over, like that. So as you can see, by doing your hip heist drill, you can assimilate a lot of the moves that you do from the mat in wrestling. The next thing I want to talk about is doing stand-up drills. Now you can do these drills by yourself or with a partner on top. The main thing you have to work on is getting the foot out with the stand-up. If you can get your foot out, then you have a good chance to beat the, beat the top man. Now, you can do an outside stand-up or an inside stand-up. Now, say if Rich is riding me on my left side, okay? This would be an inside stand-up. I come up with my inside leg. And when I say, get the foot out, this is the situation I'm talking about. Now, let me show you a situation where he stops me here. Okay, so from here, as I start to stand, he chops my arm and brings me back down to the mat. Now, watch this situation. From here, I start to stand up. I get my foot out. Now he chops. I can rotate up to my feet. Okay. So in that situation, that's my inside uh, stand up. My outside stand up would be coming up with the outside foot. So from here, I step here. Outside stand up. Now the outside and inside stand ups are done a number of different ways. But here's a little drill you can work by yourself or with a partner. This time I'll do it by myself. From here, to work through my inside stand-up motion, we work on popping, stepping, and turning. That's inside. The outside, we work on popping, stepping, and turning. So what you're doing is learning how to come up with both legs. You're learning how to come from either side with the stand-up. From here, it's like that. From this side, it's like that. From here, just like that. That's a good little drill that you can work on with a stand-up, with a man on top or by yourself. You can do this on the whistle. Now, the other situation that occurs in wrestling is uh, hand control. You can work hand control drills uh, in this situation. Now, in this situation, here's a good little situation live wrestling drill. The coach blows the whistle, he says go. You notice, Rich has his hands right on my waist. Now, when the coach blows the whistle, Rich tries to lock his hands, okay? And I try to block him from locking his hands. So from here, go. Okay, now, if you notice, I went directly for my two-on-one. What that does is teach the top man how to get control again. It teaches the bottom man how go for hand control. If you get hand control, then you can work for your escape. Now, you can work this, this hand control drill from any level. I can start from here. I can start with a hand. And when the coach blows a whistle, then I can work for my escape. Some things I might do from here is a sit out, boom. Or from this position here, I have hand control. I may even try to come to my feet and get hand control. We could do it halfway up. Rich could be in this situation here like this, and we could start from here. I could have double hand control. What this does is teach me how to use my hand control to my best advantage. So from here, the, ref, uh, the coach blows the whistle, and I work to get my escape. The next thing I want to show is chain wrestling drills from the bottom. The first drill I'm gonna show is a sit-out drill. You can do this drill by yourself. Sit out has been covered thoroughly in tape number three, Escapes and Reversals. But if you're doing this drill by yourself, the coach can blow a whistle and have the wrestlers do what we call the sit out turn in, sit out turn out drill.
Okay, on this drill, basically all that happens is the wrestler goes in first and then he goes out. Up here, and you'll stop, turn in, and turn out, in, turn out, like such. That will uh, help the wrestler on the bottom learn how to go in first and then out. Okay, now we're going to show you some drills with a man on top. This is a situation whereby the coach can call out what he wants the two wrestlers to do. For instance, on this first drill, I'm going to do a sit out turn in, Rich is going to follow, and then I'm going to come back with the switch. See here, Rich follows, and I come back with the switch. Okay? Okay, this time, I'm going to do a sit out turn in, uh, Rich is going to follow, I'll come back with the switch, and Rich will step across. So from here, I do a sit out turn in, I switch, and Rich will step across like such. This time, I'll do a sit out turn in, Rich will follow, and I'll hit him with the side roll. That. You can also work a switch, three switch drill. Okay, from this situation, and we'll do it slow so that you can follow. I'll start to switch here. I'll start to come around, Rich will three switch. He'll come around, I'll re switch. Comes around like that. These are drills that you can create yourself. You can have the bottom man start to move, have the top man counter, have the bottom man re-counter. This is actually what happens in competition a lot of the time. One man initiates the move, one man counters, then you may have to counter his counter. Now I will cover some situation drills that the bottom man can use to help him escape or reverse the opposition. The first situation is when the bottom man is broken flat. Okay, this is just a little drill and a technique that will help the bottom man regain his face. Okay, from this situation right here, what the bottom man has to do is take his outside knee like such. And rather than push straight back up when both legs are underneath like this, what you want to do is push from the side across that knee that you put out over here. Let's turn around so you can see what we're doing. Okay, so from here, what I do is I take the knee and I put it out like such. Now from here, I push over that knee. When you do that, you'll find that it's a lot easier to come back up to your base. Now you bring the knee up and you're in a good position to start from. Okay, one more time. So from this position here, and this is a drill as well as a technique. You can have the top man start with all of his weight on top. Now from here, you take your knee and you bring it up. Now you push off with both hands across the knee that you bring up, just like that. Now once you get here, you bring that inside knee up and then you're ready to go. Another situation drill and a technique is getting the top man to the side that you want him on. Okay, take for instance, he starts on my right hand side this time. Now a lot of times this situation will occur in competition and the bottom man uh, may not know how to deal with it. From here, here's a technique that you can use to get him back to the other side. From this position, all you do is you just simply go to a sit-out situation like this. From here, you just rotate back to your left side. Now he ends up on the right side. Then you can start to work your technique. Okay, watch again. He starts out on my, my right side. I want to get him back over to my left side. That's the side that I'm used to shooting technique from. So from here, what I do is I sit out and I go towards my left side, this way. Now, he's on that side. This is where I would like him to be. If he starts out on my left side, and I want to get him to my right side, I do the same thing. I come to a sit-out position, and I go towards my right-hand side. So I, I sit out from here. Now I rotate this way. Now he's on my right side. This is the side that I would like him to be on. Other situations that occur, in wrestling is when the top man has the, the tight waist here and he goes to an ankle ride on this side. Basically in this situation what you want the bottom man to do is learn how to get out of an ankle ride and there's a couple ways you can do this. Okay number one is you just sit back into him the key thing is you always think put weight on that ankle this way. Go back into a hand control situation. From here you can pull up on the hand kick the leg back or you can just push the hand down to the mat. 
then start to work for your escape. Again, from here, uh, in working on your drill, or the technique, what you're doing is having the bottom man push back, put his weight on that ankle. From here, you can pull up on the hand and kick the leg back, or you can push down on the hand, then possibly start a sit-out type motion and work for your escape or reversal. The other situation that occurs often is what happens when the top man either goes to a one-on-one -on -one situation or a two-on-one -on -one situation. If he goes one-on-one, -on -one, here's a simple technique that could be worked in, worked on in the room. When a man has a one-on-one, -on -one, you always twist away from your body. If you notice, that puts pressure on his wrist. It will help you break his grip, like such. Okay, now, if he has a two-on-one, like such, okay, from here, what we do is we, if we're broken down like this, you need to get yourself back up to this position here. What you do is you come under the forearm, you go over this hand, and you just pop. Once you pop it off, one goes out, the other one goes out. Once you get your hands away from him, try not to let him have him again. Okay, again, so from this position, position, you have to push yourself up, you come under his forearm, go over uh, the wrist that's on, well, my left side, and you pop, you pop it off. Now, immediately, this goes out, and this goes out, just like that. The other situation uh, that wrestlers need to be drilled from and work on is escaping from legs. Okay. If the bottom man has a leg in, like this, you need to work on various techniques to get your leg out. I'll just run through a few. Okay, the one thing that wrestlers might do is just a mule kick. Kick the leg straight up in the air like such, and then bring it back down. Another one, just real quickly here, is to go to this inside hip, kick the leg straight back, and hit your hip on the mat, like such, like that. Then what you do from here is sit your leg over and come out. Okay, let's show you that from this side. Okay, he has a leg in. Okay, from here, we're just going to kick the leg straight back, hit the hip on the mat, and then sit the leg back over. So we go here. Now from here, the leg comes back over, and we're ready to go for the escape. Another situation that may occur when the top man has the legs in is that if you can't get it out with a mule kick or hitting your hip to the mat, the next best thing to do is to go to your, towards your back. But when you do that, I'm going to show you a nice little technique in a good way to get out of the legs. A lot of times when wrestlers take the top man to his back, like such, they'll just end up in this position here. And you're really not in the greatest position yet. The top man can come across with a cross face, trick you right back to the mat, and still be able to put you uh, in a pinning situation. He can go to two underhooks or a crab right position. He can still go to a power half situation, like such. Now, here's the point I want to make. If you're working on getting out of the legs, and you can't get them out by doing a mule, mule kick or hitting uh, this inside leg to the mat, you still want to put the top man towards his back. However, when you do that, the whole key here is to slide your hips low as you put him to his back. That will put you in a great situation to work for your escape or for your reversal. Let's show you what we're talking about. This could be drilled in the practice room. So from here, as soon as I take him towards his back, I'm going to slide my hips low, just like this. Now, if you notice, let's turn around. Once I slide my hips low on the mat, there's really not a whole lot he can do. I can use my legs to brace out. I can use my hands to brace out. And he is in a very, very poor position to control me. You know, once I get here, I can come under a leg this way, come over. I can slide even further down this way, and this way, slide and come out. I'm in a position so that I can reach over his ankle, put my head under his leg, and follow him that way. Or if he kicks back over to his base going this way, I'll just follow him up this way. But again, watch this. And as I said before, this is a very good technique. Not only do you work on putting the man towards his back, but as you put him towards his back, you slide low, as low as you can get, just like this. Now, once you do this, once you do this, you're in a great position to defend the legs. 
you know, if he's trying to rep, go under your arms here or whatever, this is great. You just reach up around his head like such and just pull him up and over. Those are some situations you can work on when a man has the legs in. In a few ways that you can get out of the legs once he puts them in. The other thing that, that you can drill in the practice room is preventing him from even getting the legs in. If you know that you have a man that's pretty good on the top, pretty good with the legs, here's a good little drill that you can work on. What you can do is have the top man try to put the legs in, and the bottom man just put his knees together, like such. If your knees together, your, knees is, your, your base is more narrow, but he's going to have a very difficult time putting the legs in. Basically, you have to block the inside position. Then when you get your chance to work for an escape or a reversal, then you go. Another situation you work on, it's a, it's a drill and a technique, is to have the top man start to throw the leg in, like such, okay? Now from here, what you want to do, if you can catch him, is catch his ankle like this. And this is a nice little drill that will teach you how to work for an escape. What you do from this position, is you throw him one way and your body goes the other way. You lift this way and you go that way. Okay, again, you have the top man start to put his leg in. What you do is you catch his ankle right here. From here, you lift real hard this way and then you turn the other way. That's a drill that you can work on either side. I would like to thank ASICS Tiger for sponsoring this tape. I would also like to thank my two partners, Rick and Sean, Thanks for helping out, guys. This has been the ninth tape of my series. I hope that you'll be able to use these drills to help you become a better coach or a wrestler. Best of luck with your wrestling.